CataractCoach.com. You must learn MSICS. That's Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgery. We've got an anonymous resident from the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute in Miami who submitted this video. This is a patient who has a very dense cataract, tripan blue dyes put inside the eye, eyes filled with viscoelastic. Attraction sutures placed just to give good exposure here. Superior conjunctival pyridomy is being made. Now, this surgeon is going to sit superiorly. You could also sit temporally, but traditionally we sit superiorly for, hit, for this. A little bit of cautery is being done now to stop any of that uh, uh, bleeding. We measure at 7 millimeters for the scleral tunnel. That's the external opening. This is about half scleral depth of frown incision. And the key to this surgery is this tunnel length of the incision. So now using that crescent blade to tunnel in about half scleral depth, and you need to get the tip of the blade there into the cornea, and then dissect to both left and right sides, both directions, and look at that slight sawing motion, almost like using your finger to open a sealed envelope. So a little bit of sawing motion, and this incision is going to be tunnel-shaped. Very important to have this tunnel shape to the incision. This technique of surgery is very popular in many parts of the world, such as India, and this is a very efficient technique. Published studies have shown that even a master FACO surgeon won't be as efficient as a good master SICS surgeon when we're talking about doing cataract surgery in these very dense brunescent lenses. And it may actually be safer. Now, using this keratome, going to enter inside the eye and make our incision all the way through full thickness, entering inside the anterior chamber. Now, in this technique, we're also going to make a normal capsular axis. So there's the entrance inside. A little bit long for my taste. It's a little bit too much in the visual axis. I would have started the incision a little bit further posterior. Cystome and utrata forceps are going to be used to make a large capsular axis. Do not make a 4 millimeter capsular axis. This has to be at least five and a half millimeters. Even six is okay. And the reason is you need to get this nucleus completely out of the capsular bag. So nice capsular axis is going to be performed here. Tripan blue dye certainly helps a lot in these type of dense cataracts. This SICS procedure can be very gentle to the corneal endothelium. Because you're not putting all that ultrasound energy in the eye to break up a cataract. You're taking the nucleus out whole. And so it's very common to be able to do a very brunescent cataract and have a clear cornea the very next day. Do keep in mind that even with placing a suture in this large incision, there's going to be a very significant astigmatic effect. And so it's going to cause flattening at the meridian of this deep, uh, of this incision. So in this case, that's 90 degrees. Sometimes it may be better off to make this incision temporally for the patients, because remember, most of these older patients have against the rule of stigmatism, which means steep at 180. And so by making the incision at 180, it may end up helping them more. Now you have to enlarge the incision. So now we're enlarging it. And again, keeping in mind the funnel shape here. This is that funnel shape of the incision. Now, once that's done, hydrodissection. And the goal is to get the lens nucleus to slightly prolapse out of the capsular bag. There it is. And then it can be completely dialed up and away from the capsular bag. More viscoelastic going behind the nucleus. This resident is doing a very good job. This looks great. Again, now it's time to use a Sinsky hook or even a cannula to get that nucleus out of the capsular bag. You want to get this nucleus out of the capsular bag so that we can easily extract it from that incision. So there it is, out of the capsular bag. And it's fully in the anterior chamber now. The corneal endothelium has been protected with a dispersive viscoelastic. Now you can put more dispersive viscoelastic behind the nucleus, as well as in front of it. Let's recoat that cornea. Don't touch the endothelium, but inject enough to really protect the cornea. You know, use a lens loop to express the nucleus from the anterior chamber. Helps if you have the, the anterior chamber highly pressurized with viscoelastic. And there comes the entire nucleus out of the eye. And so now refilling it now with more viscoelastic and then using bimanual IA to remove that cortical material, very carefully cleaning up the eye. And now notice using those two pairs and teeth incisions for the bimanual IA, look how the main incision is relatively clean. It's not leaking much. The AC is staying formed. And that just shows you that this long tunnel 
that we make in SICS is very helpful for long-term sealing. So you definitely need to have that shelved incision, the long tunnel length for SICS in order to have good sealing. This is very different than the standard method of extra capsular manual extraction that was taught 20 years ago, where they used corneal scleral scissors to the right and left. You don't want to do that technique. You're much better off doing SICS. Here's a three-piece IOL going in the capsule bag. You could put a single-piece lens in the bag as well. Of course, the advantage of a three-piece lens is there are more options for placement. So even if the lens uh, goes in the capsule, ba uh, capsule bag, it's okay. If it goes in the sulk, it's okay. And But in this case, it's completely within the bag. And the lens centers up beautifully. Both haptics are going in the bag, a little bit of rotation to ensure that. And this looks great. This patient's going to have a great outcome. Taking out the viscoelastic at the end of the case, all that's left is to suture the incision. Some surgeons that do the SICS without a suture. I think in this case, you're just better off putting in a suture. That's a 7 millimeter incision. And so here it's left without a suture and just closing the conjunctiva with the vicral. And this patient had a beautiful result. Definitely learn this technique if you're in your residency training. It is very useful to use in patients who have a weak cornea and a very dense nucleus, and you can have a beautiful outcome. I want to thank our resident from Baskin Palmer. Great job.